Welcome back everybody. So in this video, I wanted to uh, kind of wrap up the story behind the deer that I shot with my recurve in Pennsylvania. As you guys know that watched that video, it was a, a real heartbreaker. I hit it just a little bit low. I anticipated the deer dropping uh, a lot more than he did, but part of that reason was because it was so close, it didn't have time to drop. Uh, anyways, we tracked the deer a really long ways and we never found it. Uh, it was actually only a couple weeks ago that I finally uh, realized what happened to that deer. Uh, I had no closure. I was under the impression that it went off and died somewhere because we never got another truck camera picture of it. Nobody ever seen it again. And it just so happened, I was talking to a, a friend of mine from a neighboring town of where I live, and uh, he was talking about you know his rifle season and his Pennsylvania buck, and he sent me a picture of the Pennsylvania buck, and I got to looking at it, and I'm like, holy crap, that looks just like the deer that I shot with my recurve. And uh, so then, of course, I had to dig a little bit. I was like, well, where in Pennsylvania did you shoot it? And he said, uh, you know, such and such a place, which was the neighbor of Slava's where I actually shot the buck. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Was there a wound, you know, right behind the shoulder uh, low? He's like, yeah, there's a big hole right there. It looked like an arrow went through. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the buck. So uh, finally, you know, finally finished the story on my recurve buck in Pennsylvania. It actually got shot with a rifle uh, either the first day or first week of rifle season in Pennsylvania. So, and the buck was fine. It was running with some uh, a few doe and it was coming down a ravine and uh, he seen it and shot it and it was doing totally fine. So uh, that's the story on that buck. And then uh, you're probably looking at these horns next to me on the table. So this is that huge buck that I was hunting in Ohio. Uh, I went out there, as you guys know, and looked for his sheds on multiple different occasions and was not able to find them ever. Well, the landowner that let me hunt out there actually went for a walk literally the night after I went out there and looked and was able to pick up uh, these horns. And uh, he was gracious enough. He texted me right away and said I found them. And it was, it was funny. He found them right where I was already. You know, I had but tracked my movements on Onyx and sent him the sent him the, the map that I had went and he's like I'm sorry but I, you walked right by him and I'm like well that's you know fantastic to, to think I walked by sheds that are literally the size of a tree so here they are so this is the buck that I was driving out to Ohio to hunt almost every weekend this this uh, winter with a bow and uh, we, we gross scored him at 157 inches. And that was giving him uh, a pretty small, you know, spread as well. But we uh, got it as close as we could and we, we lost a few inches because the squirrels were able to get to it a little bit already and, and uh, nipped off all the tips of these on this side. But man, just look at that darn buck, you know. The, uh, showing you on this video camera doesn't really do him justice at all, but uh, hopefully you can see You know what kind of deer this really was. It was just a an absolute giant But the landowner is, is such a good guy, you know, I, I Kaylee and I actually went out and met him for dinner last weekend and uh you know, he brought these sheds and showed them to me and he said, uh, you know, you put in a lot of time hunting this deer and uh, I'd like to see you have them. And I was like, no way, I'm not taking, you know, these horns. They're, this is literally almost 160 inch deer, you know. And he's like, no, I'm serious, you know, I want you to have the horns. And, uh, you know, what a great guy he is and uh, his family for letting me come out there and uh, use his property as if it was mine. I mean. He literally gave me free reign to this whole property. And I've never, I had never known this guy or met this guy in my life prior to this year. And uh, you know, people like that are really hard to come by. So I can't thank him enough for for being gracious enough to let me, uh, you know, hunt on his property and uh, use it and utilize it like I did. And then on top of that, you know, he went out and found these sheds and just handed them to me and said, you know, you deserve them. And, it's just crazy. People, you, you just don't see people like that anymore around here, it seems to me. But, you know, it, it proves that there are people out there like that. So, uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video up with uh, doing some work on the strip food plot down here. I want to uh, get down there and pull the, I had cut down some crab apple trees and I wanna get those tops out. I'm just gonna drag them up in the woods uh, off the edge of the field up here and create a little more cover uh, with those tops. So we're gonna work on that and we've got all kinds of projects to get after this spring. I'm gonna be planting some soybeans here uh, first week of May. So I'm looking forward to, that, to doing that and uh, Lots more stuff coming, but man, I can't wait to, to see this deer next year. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're back, everybody. I just got back from work, and uh, I've been wanting to get down here and clean this stuff up. I want to clean all this uh, cut-up wood out of here, and there's an old fence line that runs through here with barbed wire and stuff in it. I want to get all that out of here. All this... And then we're gonna take and drag these uh, trees that I cut down this winter. We're gonna take and hook up to them with the Honda and we're gonna drag them right up into the woods and uh, get them out of here. So we've got a little work to do, but you can see uh, all the leaves are just starting to pop out on these crabapple trees right here. So that's a good sign. We're getting there, slowly but surely. That Honda's been pretty impressive with the power, dragging this stuff out of here, digging right into the ground and whatnot. We'll go ahead and hook up to that one right there next and pull that one out. I'm gonna call it quits on uh, today. We got a lot done. It's uh, eight, April 15th and it's like 40 degrees. It was actually snowing a little bit here 
uh, a couple hours ago, little tiny snowflakes, but we got all these uh, thorn apple trees that I had cut down this winter picked up right here. And we got them drug up into the woods out of the way and we still have uh, to clean up this stuff right here. We'll do this on the next trip and it looks like we have a woodchuck that made, made uh, a house out of that. But we got a bunch of these big sticks picked up out of here. So everything's coming together nicely. We'll need Vern to come over with a, a backhoe and dig these stumps out. And I'm still trying to figure out whether or not I actually want to take this tree out as well. Uh, it pretty much comes down to whether or not, you know, it would be more beneficial to be a, a crab apple tree right here, or would it be more beneficial to have, uh, you know, the rest of this corner be food plot. So I'm not, I haven't yet made up my mind on that because if we take that out we'll add a lot more a lot more to this food plot you can see we could go right through here with it up to where this ditch is where the water runs off and uh that's another thing we got to do is dig this ditch out more it's filled in with you know all the water runs off right through here and uh when this field gets uh plowed and what not in the spring we get a heavy rain all the water comes down here and fills this with dirt topsoil when this normally is a ditch where it runs down through here and then we can actually divert the ditch to go over into there instead of off this way into the corner of the food plot so if you're watching this Vern I've got lots of work for you with the backhoe we got to do the same thing at the upper farm. I cut down some thorn apple trees. We're going to expand that food plot. And I got to go up there and uh, get those drug into the woods and out of there. So I appreciate everybody watching. We'll be back soon. Hopefully. If I'm not ever back again, I had a really bad week or day or hour or minute or something went bad. But take it easy.